All right, welcome back everyone. Uh, today I'm doing a little bit of landscape photography here at a, a local state park. And so I'm really just kind of approaching this uh, sunset over here. And I'm trying to think of what to really uh, work the scene with because it was really just this bright, you know, kind of overwhelming really sunlight. And now it's kind of dipped behind this really giant cloud that looks like it's going to just be directly in the middle of the way of the sunset. So I'm really not too sure uh, what I'm going to do here. I want to really work the scene or whatever. Jeez. But right now I'm just making my way to it at least. And there's an opening and oh wow. <laughs> Check it out. It's like a anvil cloud. I think that's what I'll call it. No. My, the perspective image I take here, probably title it Anvil Cloud, but I really like that. See, I was thinking with this cloud, big cloud in the way, I was thinking it might be just kind of hinder the overall kind of image I'm kind of thinking of here, but now I think it has some potential. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do this though. And see the lights fading so fast, I got probably less than half an hour. Uh, remaining of true daylight. I think what I'm going to do here is uh, go along this little trail uh, behind me here and see if there's anything else or any other kind of openings that kind of uh, break away kind of like this a little bit. And I'm just going to simply see if I can really uh, work the scene a little bit more. But right here actually, this is probably going to be my one spot, the main spot I'm thinking of. Um, this is the one, I think, area that it's going to really work out. It's just As you can tell, it's just really nice out in the open and yeah so I'm gonna hike a little bit more and um, then probably just end up coming back to the spot honestly but um, you never know you never know so um, I'm just gonna pre-scout a little bit more uh, the remaining amount of daylight and uh, just before dark uh, see if I can make a proper sunset photograph here um, just over the lake with that uh, the anvil cloud oh man can you see that the lights just kind of casting right over and it looks like so tree line obviously is kind of obscuring it, but I think it's actually kind of creeping out I'd say with all that light look at this as I get closer and closer Just really get the warmth of it all. Oh Yeah Whew. Ooh, that is bright Wow, ooh <laughs> That is a bright Sun and oh wow, I just love this place this, this beautiful I think it's about I want to say 2,000 acre lake. There's a little cabin behind me there on the side. But um, over here, yeah, this, this lake is just uh, just spectacular and just the views of it. And I'm seeing tots now because I looked at it a little too long. Man, just oh, look at that. Beautiful. If I can't make a photograph out of that and make it work in the amount of time I have, less than half an hour, give or take, uh, we'll say 25 minutes. That means I need to be ready before, quite quite a ways before that. Um, of course, like any uh, landscape photographer would say. But yeah, the lights really it's getting lower and lower. It's getting real fast. Actually, right right down there. Let's see see if it's a good view from let's see if the sunset looks any better down here. Okay, so oh gosh, it's so bright. It's still way up in the. The sky it really doesn't hit the the atmosphere and the different layers yet it's really um as you can see oh it's just so beautiful here i love it and it's a nice calm rushing calm rushing <laughs> calm water as it just kind of flows in and out from uh, the different the wakes of the, uh, the ripple effect of the boats i don't even know what i'm saying right now i'm so tired i've been hiking all day and then i was like let's give for a sunset photo because this is a place that's very on the right kind of day, like a bright sunny day like this, or there's minimal cloud cover, um, it definitely, I'd say, delivers. At least it has in previous trips. So, yeah, it's it's like, of course, there's a nice, it's a big, thick wall cloud kind of formation that's right. It's only in this part of the sky. Everything else is this, this. Um, I think there's serial cumulus, uh, serial cumulus clouds, if I'm correct, but. There's just this nice big formation over here, which like I said, can make or break it. Um, it can either really work out and make it look better, like make a black or a backlit cloud, um, but or it can just overshadow the whole thing and just make a 
really kind of lackluster sunset. I'm going to continue a little bit along the trail here. Just a little, I don't know how much longer, um, less than a mile probably. And then I'm quickly might have to run back, I don't, know, I don't know, to get all the way to, back to there. But um, we will see. I don't know if the anvil cloud's really gonna stick in the same way, especially with the sun moving, obviously lower towards the horizon, but um, yeah, we will see. All right, so I made it a little bit ways um, further on down the trail, but here I am back at this kind of resting spot, and that is a beautifully lit tree, just right against the lake water. And you got the nice kind of very subtly um, lit, at least on this side, the right side of it. And uh, there's the sunset. Let's see if I can get a little bit better view there. Oh yeah, that's beautiful, beautiful. Um, I can either go right here and set up, but um, that's going to put it at kind of more at an angle. So I think what I'm really thinking here is um, I'm just going to go back to the very first, the initial spot, um, which. Honestly, I probably should have just stayed at in the first place and uh, started you know, setting up my tripod, choosing the focal length and all that, because that's going to take some time as well. And I got about 15 minutes, so I need to really hurry up. <laughs> but try not to, at the same time, try not to stress the real importance of a, you know, kind of like a grand, beautiful photo, because um, it may not always materialize, even if it's a beautiful sunset. And it's a hard lesson to learn, but I've been trying to learn it more and more lately. So I'm going to make my way back to that first spot. And I'll hunker down, set up my gear, kind of talk you through my settings and uh, my different kind of gear and lens choices and all that stuff. So I'll see you in a bit. Already have a very small window of opportunity here. Um, as you can see, it's just right now. There's that small little gap. Here we go. Okay. Try it again. Let me purposely underexpose. So basically, what I'm doing here is I got uh, 250th of a second f14, just a nice, nice get a nice uh, range of exposure and a nice depth of field, and then ISO 800 just to illuminate the really dark tree line that's right over there all right so i changed positions just ever so slightly and it's already dropped you know way down this kind of thin this wall cloud this is stringing along the horizon there but um here's a 75 millimeter perspective see it really zoomed in there was a little sailboat that actually went by right along the water there that was pretty cool so i lined it up there actually not in that one. Oh, that's older photos and that's all, all the older photos, at least stuff from today. I don't want to say that's it, because I feel like there's something that could still work with the scene here. Um, I'm just trying to think, using a small telephoto here. I'm trying to really consider the whole the yeah, foc focal length, really. Um, here, back up a little bit here. All right. Now. Cause it's still like <laughs> I know how to describe it really but it's just still lit up right over um, that little it's kind of like an L shape really that kind of like little nook and cranny there so I'm gonna see if I can oh and there's a nice reflection there in the uh, see in the water there yes yeah, so actually ooh, I like this duality right here colors my ball heads a little too stiff that's why I'm like shaking as I'm moving the camera there we go a little bit better at least okay there you go see even from like a thumbnail perspective it kind of has that weird look to it so increase my exposure ever so slightly there's the uh, histogram up there and technically you're supposed to expose to the right um, especially for landscapes here I'm going to purposely as you can see, I'm a full stop of light and then some uh, underexposed. Actually, I'll keep it about a stop of light. 
And then for a hyperfocal distance, I'm going to focus about a third of the way into the scene. Since this is very, very far away, just the all the different elements here uh, with the all the way across on the other side of the lake there. And then of course you got the clouds and then uh, the sun and all that. So just a lot of different elements and they're all just really, really pushed back and far away. Um, for, and then also uh, the foreground and midground uh, lake water, obviously. So I'm essentially trying to make a more, from front to back, a more focused image. And I think the aperture, really small aperture at f14 really would be more effective in this case. Now I could always focus stack, but um, I don't feel like it's really necessary in this case. And uh, normally with sunrises and sunsets, I like to bracket, um, exposing once for the, the sky and the, because it simply overexposed the, the sun, whether it's setting or rising, really doesn't matter. And so I usually uh, shoot an image just for the sun, I mean rather the sky detail, which includes the sun obviously. And then anything that would be in the foreground or maybe even midground. Um, so, but in this case, I really it's not really needed to bracket, and I should really take a shot as I'm sitting here rambling. I'm also using a circular polarizer filter, which um, helps to just fine tune. It's really only affecting that streak of lake water down there, and it lets you see that see that light strip that kind of just dials back and forth. So I'm going to darken it in this case. I feel like it looks a lot better that way. And then, uh, see I already lost another little stop of light. Two second uh, timer, remote timer. So here's shutter release, and that's what we got. It's not too bad, it's a little crooked actually. Just might wanna, if you have an electronic level or even a bubble level, oh, I have a bubble up in my back. that here it is I was like did I bring it I hope so it's like I hate leaving things behind so this is a simple triple level that means that's three different moving parts uh, to level your uh, gear uh, mainly your camera in this case and so we just go stupid oh silly me wrong way and so this one uh, essentially mounts onto your hot shoe. And so I'm gonna get it at least decently level. Be nice. And the reason why I'm doing this actually is I'm gonna to attempt to shoot a pano. This whole scene. I might even include these trees on the other side. I'm not too sure quite yet. Um, we'll just see how many real shots I can vertically break up and do along here. So um, let me. Let me level off this tripod here, or the whole camera and everything, and then see what I can do here. Alrighty, so I have it at least leveled on this. Um, I set it with my L bracket here. I set it vertically, because I'm doing panos typically with a uh, vertical orientation. Uh, it just works a lot better, and you can break it up in the more smaller bits. So actuality, you, you comprise more in the, the final result, the final image. Uh, so I'm keeping my settings relatively the same. I'm still going to underexpose at least a stop of light. Um, that may work against my favor here, but we'll just have to see in post-production. Um, like I said, I'm really not trying to bracket in this case, and I'm going to try and stick to that. But I'm focusing a third of the way into the scene. I'm starting on this right side over here, kind of pointing this way. And I should be able to, I'm thinking about four or five um, overall uh, exposures will be needed. And then uh, simply just um, have it my ball head here uh, just kind of adjusted just right so that way it can basically just pan as the name is just panorama pan with the entire uh, scene here so and then for this initial set um, I may do some more depending on how successful these look at first glance I may include some of those uh, the side foliage there that's now pretty deeply silhouetted even despite being right here in front of me in the foreground so Anyways, let's get started here. Try the first one. Two second remote timer. Here it goes. The trick is to really leave a sliver of the um, the previous uh, kind of image there. So I left about about a uh, I don't know a fifth of I don't know whatever fraction you want to use. A really small amount, a sliver on this side. And so I'm pretty much just going to take all these different exposures and see what they look like. 
All right, so I just took a uh, four kind of rapid succession uh, images here vertically, like I said. And uh, one little tricky thing, especially if the light's changing or ever evolving really, really fast, uh, you really have to adjust. You have to take the images in uh, almost a really kind of quick fashion just so you can kind of get the nice even exposure across the whole suite. And here's the results. This is, this is starting from uh, the, the, the most recent one I took on uh, the left side here. Actually, that's live view mode. What am I doing? Oop, there we go. So you can see for reference. And then down here and then goes down. There's that uh, where the sunset right over on that right side against the, the anvil cloud. And then there's that last one. And then uh, essentially you get a special piece of software. And then uh, essentially you just load up those. Uh, you can even load up the raw files or the JPEGs of um, your choice, really. And then it stitches them together. The colors are really vibrant. Um, despite being, uh, like I said, underexposed for a stop of light. Because remember, the exposure meter, at least when it's built in into your camera here, um, at least on the front side with a Canon DSLR like this, uh, it's not always going to be correct. Or if you have a creative, if you want to use full creative control of your gear and your compositions and your exposure, of course, then you should always um, you know, override if, you, if necessary or if you just want to, like I did in this case, just to make the scene a little bit darker. That was more of a creative choice. Um, that I wanted to try try out with this uh, sunset images here and so um, I'm trying to figure out is there anything else I want to do I might take another uh, set of uh, panoramic images maybe just one or two more sets just to ensure I get a nice kind of aligned um, sometimes my my leveling skills with the tripod aren't the best and so um, that would just really ensure that everything is just nicely even and leveled out um, in case the software on the computer can't correct that. And then from there, um, that should be it for the day. Very beautiful sunset, um, as you can tell, as it just illuminates right over top of the, the clouds over there. And yeah, the anvil cloud kind of, as you can see, kind of just stretched across the sky now. So it really didn't look like how it did at the beginning of this video here. All right, so now I am trying something a little different. I have a 50 millimeter prime lens on here and I have it stacked two filters. I have a circular polarizer and a neutral density eight stop filter. So just to really further darken the kind of overall image in the whole entire scene and as well as you know lengthen that shutter speed to really make a nice kind of ripply almost like glass like effect. That's kind of what I'm aiming for with the uh, the lake water here. And so as you can tell the composition I just have uh, centered here uh, both of these kind of prominent uh, kind of clouds and then have it Pretty much foregoing, foregoing the uh, rule of thirds here, as you can see, because I have the reflections uh, in the horizon line, just everything centered and straight in the image. But that's kind of what I'm going for. That's my aim with this now, is to really just perfect the kind of symmetry. As you can see, kind of just in lake reflections of trees or clouds and everything else of that sort. So, as you can tell, I have it on camera, the live view mode here. And that was the uh, exposure simulation there. So as you can tell, it's getting really, really dark out, um, at least for the built-in camera uh, exposure meter here. So I'm going to really lengthen that shutter speed. It's also getting really dark because of the uh, neutral density filter. And I'm going to keep it. There you go. I raised it. I'm still at a under, I'm under exposing a stop of light, an entire stop. And I feel like that's going to work out pretty well. ISO 800. And then I bumped up, or rather I stopped down. Uh, the aperture to f16 when uh, initially I was doing some f14 uh, kind of set of images there and there is a sailboat it's a little like a neon green light it's coming right in the frame there and that might ruin it so I'm gonna quickly take it actually it is coming in the frame so I'm gonna quickly take this image and we got I don't know why I head on to the camera but it's okay it's coming in the frame shoot 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 Let's see if I can get it real quick now I wasn't intending to put a sailboat in the in the entire frame here, but it's a as you can tell it's a beautiful, beautiful um, kind of now twilight kind of night sky. There's the crescent moon up there. And these nice kind of soft clouds up ahead. Just a beautiful, beautiful night. All right, so I was initially kind of worried about stacking the filters because that also uh, reduces image quality and further softens the image, which I definitely don't want to go for, especially in this kind of darker sky that create a more grainy effect there. So, but I feel like that's it guys. Um, so 
Thanks so much for watching. Uh, this has been a nice little kind of almost point of view, if you will, uh, kind of sunset, uh, kind of landscape image that I've been working here. And I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you uh, learned something as well. So uh, leave down below uh, any comments or questions you have and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.